Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this screencast in which we are going to calculate covariance and then later use the covariance to find out the correlation coefficient between two assets. For that purpose, we have taken two assets here, asset A and asset B. Their return estimates are given to us here and these are the estimates assuming that the economy can enter into three possible states of either boom or recession or something in between that is a normal time period. The probability of each of these states is also given to us 25% chance of a boom, 50% chance of a normal time period and a 25% probability for a recessionary phase. We have also been supplied with the, the um, return and standard deviation data about these assets. We can have a look at that data here. The expected return on asset A is 10%. The expected return on asset B has been computed and it is equal to 10%. The variance for asset A's return is 50 and the standard deviation which is simply the square root of this thing is 7.0711%. The variance of uh, asset B's returns is 12.5 and that gives us a standard deviation of returns of 3.5355%. Now we can use this information to find out the covariance between asset A and B. So what we are going to do is we are going to start with the first probability here. So let me make some space here so that the entire set of data is visible at all times. So what we do is we pick up this probability here 0.25 and write it here 0.25 and then I am going to start a bracket inside this bracket I am going to write the actual return of asset A during the boom phase that is 20 percent. So I write here 20 and then from this 20 I am going to subtract the expected return on asset A which is equal to 10 percent. So I write here 10. Then I close the bracket and start another bracket into which I am going to accommodate the second asset for which the actual return during boom is 5 percent. So I am going to write here 5 and from this 5 I am going to subtract the expected return on asset B and that is 10 percent. So I write here 10 and then I am going to close the bracket and then I am going to accommodate the next probability that is of a normal time period. So I am going to write a plus sign and then write the probability of normal time period which is uh, 50 percent. So let me write here 0 0.5 and then inside I am going to first of all accommodate asset A which has a 10 percent return during normal times. So I am going to write here 10 and from this I am going to subtract the expected return of asset A which is also 10 percent this one here. So I write here 10 again close the bracket and then I start another bracket in which I am going to accommodate asset B. The actual return during normal times for asset B is 10 percent. So I write here 10 and then from that I subtract the expected return of asset B which is again 10 percent here. So I write it 10 again and close the bracket and then I am going to accommodate the last probability and that is of a recession. So I put a plus sign and write the last probability here that is 0.25. So I write here 0 0.25 and then inside the bracket I am going to repeat the exercise one more time. For asset A I write the actual return 0 percent and then from that I take out the um, expected return on asset A which is 10 percent and then in another bracket I am going to write the expected uh, the actual return for asset uh, B which is 15 and from that I am going to subtract the expected return of asset B which is 10 and that completes the covariance formula into which we have substituted all our numbers. So what we are going to get here now let us put an equality sign and let us focus on this term here. When we solve this term what we are going to get is uh, minus 12.5 and then we put a plus sign and then we look at the second term which is this one here. Uh, it is easy to see that we have a 0 inside this bracket and a 0 inside this bracket because 10 minus 10 is going to give us a 0. So this entire term becomes 0 and then a plus sign and then we are going to focus on this term here when we solve this one we are going to get another minus 12.5. So let me get rid of this plus sign here and write another 
minus 12.5 and that is going to give us a covariance of minus 25. Now this covariance my friends can be used to find out the correlation coefficient between asset A and B. Correlation coefficient simply scales the covariance between plus 1 and minus 1. So we write here rho of A and B. The rho here, the Greek letter rho indicates to us that we are talking about correlation. So we write here uh, rho of A and B that is correlation between A and B and it is going to be simply equal to the covariance. Let me write down the covariance first which is minus 25. So I write down minus 25 and then I am going to divide this minus 25 with the product of the standard deviations of both the assets. The standard deviation of asset A is 7.0711. So I write here 7.0711 and I am going to multiply this thing. Let me put this guy in the bracket so that we can signify a product between two terms. In the second bracket, I am going to write the standard deviation of asset B which is 3.5355%. So let me write that 3.5355 and that is it. Once we solve this, we are going to find that the correlation coefficient between these two assets is minus 1. So what we have is we have two assets A and B which are perfectly negatively correlated with us uh, with each other. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen. Bye bye.